We're now going to look at some basic partial differential equation solution approaches and then terminology um, for the partial differential equations. Uh, this is in preparation for examining the analysis of the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, first, uh, just techniques for solving the equations, even though that none of these can be used directly to solve the Navier-Stokes equations except in like extreme uh, circumstances um, where a lot of assumptions were made, which kind of reduces them to very simple equations. We're just analyzing parts of them for physics. We need to under, just kind of talk about these. And these are usually taught um, in different classes, um, especially introduction and partial differential equations, but usually not all of them. Uh, so the first one is separation of variables, and this is where we might have a simple partial differential equation, and it might have two particular variables, and we moved one to the left and one to the right and seek a solution. So this is just the most common separation of variable technique, and you'll see that um, through this course. The next is method of characteristics. Um, John von Neumann once joked that uh, you don't understand method of characteristics, you might just get used to it, or nobody does. Uh, but this isn't true. Method of characteristics and the ideas behind it are really old. And the idea is that the equations in motion might have some kind of characteristics where the solutions are indeterminate on them. And it can get pretty complicated. Um, method of characteristics is used heavily in fluid dynamics to solve equations. Um, have applications like in nozzles, we might design a nozzle with the method of characteristics uh, to ideally expand the flow. The next one you'll see in this course is integral transforms. Uh, integral transforms could be things like the Fourier transform or Laplace transform, um, performing that action on the equations and then doing other operations and inverting them. Sometimes you can find analytical solutions of certain PDEs with that approach. Uh, change of variables, substitution of variables uh, is excellent and reduces more complicated equations to sometimes ones that we can solve analytically. Uh, there's a lot of guess and check in these types of work and it's often very specific. Uh, the last one is superposition. Of course, if we have a linear PDE and we find the analytical solution, we can add that to any other linear PDE a solution of the same equation to obtain more solutions. So basically, if you have a linear PD like the wave equation, um, we can superimpose uh, solutions to get more equations. Um, generally, none of these things work really well for the full Navier-Stokes equations, but uh, these tools are still used throughout the course to develop um, things we'll need later. In the partial differential equations, you'll see common operators, and a lot of these are seen and usually introduced to students in Calculus 3. Just want to remind you of the names and what they mean here in this concise slide. Uh, the NABLA operator is an operator that can uh, operate on a vector, um, becomes a vector. If we take that operator, um, which is really something like uh, partial partial xi, plus partial partial yj plus partial partial zk, something like that with unit vectors, which we talked about in the last class. We can apply that to other um, uh, scalars or dots of vectors and get quantities and fluids. And these were discussed sort of in a way that's very abstract in Calculus 3, um, but they were really, in my view, you know, most applicable to electromagnetics and fluid dynamics. So there's the gradient operator. We might say f equals nambla f. So the grad of, say, uh, phi of a scalar field is a vector, as you know. And we would express this as like a multiplication or just really just putting the um, value of the nambla operator on the scalar. And you get a scalar field um, with the scalar field psi. So that would give us a gradient. If we have the inner product, which we talked about last time in terms of index or an Einstein notation, we'd get the divergence. And you can think the divergence of, say, A, or a vector field of A, becomes a scalar. And you know that because there's an inner product. And this is basically expressed as the dot product of nabla with the vector A. So you see this a lot in the Navier-Stokes equations, like 
that divergence of the velocity is zero would imply incompressibility or the D'Alembert condition. If you see the Laplacian operator, say it's a divergence of grad of psi of the scalar field psi, that's a scalar. And this is expressed by, say, the scalar multiplication of the Nabla operator. So we'll just write the Laplacian as uh, superscript two of the Nabla. So it's, um, it's very similar. And that would be something like partial two u, partial x squared plus partial two v, partial y squared plus partial w two, partial z squared is zero. So this operator here, the partial second derivatives x, y, and z operating on u, that would be the Laplacian operator on a scalar field, say if the scalar field was u. Okay, and then there's the curl. If we take the cross product of nabla with say a velocity v or any vector v, we get the curl of the velocity. And that would be physically related to, of course, vorticity in a fluid. Uh, more operators, if we think about rotation, so the rotation of a curl a, or we're gonna write R-O-T-A for rotation of the vector field A becomes a vector, which is expressed by the dot product of nabla with the vector A. So we can write that uh, nabla as a sum of I equals one to N to the number of dimensions of the uh, basis function or the normal vector in each direction I, J, K, et cetera, with the corresponding partial derivative. So I kind of wrote this out in the last slide for the operator nabla. This is uh, writing out the operating nabla in full form from the summation. Pretty straightforward. And you can write that in this parenthesis form indicating it's acting on the particular portions of the vector. So this is a version in 3D. Pretty straightforward. Now we look at the Dale Bar operator, and this will be written this way. And it'll often be written as a little square, so don't get that confused with like an end of a proof. Some people might like do this at end of a proof or end of a statement. And uh, it'll be written in this way. This is the most common form you might see. It might be something like one over, um, say the speed of sound squared times the partial derivative, the second partial derivative with respect to time minus, uh, basically um, a delta. Now the delta here indicates the uh, nabla two, which you know is a Laplacian. So it's one over the speed of sound squared times the second derivative of time minus the Laplacian, and that will be the delta. So this is also, of course, the wave operator. So it's really the operator for a wave equation. If you say, that's P, you put P here as the uh, variable you're operating on, a scalar, and you set it to zero, then of course you have something like a wave equation for pressure. You can see written out here in full form, one over C squared times the second derivative of time, minus partial two partial X squared, minus partial two partial Y squared, minus partial two partial Z squared. So that's something you might remember and make a note of. If we have, say, a vector derivative of a scalar field F, we might write it as a gradient. So if we have F is a scalar field, you can write that as partial F partial X with E X vector. We would call that the uh, nabla F. So we'll just call that nabla F. Uh, remember the divergence of a vector field V is the uh, divergence, as we talked about earlier. So we also might write in our field divergence v, the vector field, as partial v x, partial x, plus partial v y, partial y, plus partial v z, partial z, is nabla dot v. So this is the nabla operator, the inner product of a vector field v. If the divergence field of the velocity is zero, then of course it's incompressible. And uh, this is also like a very simple incompressible PDE uh, that we'll use in incompressible Navier-Stokes analysis. Uh, so you'll see also people talking about the curl of a velocity field. Uh, so you say the curl of E 
uh, has this form where we have nabla cross v, which we talked about on the previous uh, slide or so, right here, curl. And that would just have this big expansion. As you can see, it's really like the determinant of e, x, e, y, e, z with the other components of the determinant. And you can derive that formula just from taking the determinant of a three by three matrix in three dimensions. Um, particular directional derivatives of a scalar field, say of f of x, y, and z. So if f is a scalar field like pressure or temperature in three dimensions, you can easily find the directional derivative by taking that a of ax, ay, az with the dot product of the gradient of f. And we write this as a vector inner product of nabla f. Note the parentheses here. Uh, evaluate nabla f first, you get a vector, and then you take the vector a inner product with nabla b. The Laplace operator, once again, we can write as the delta equals the second partial derivative terms in each direction in one, two, three, or higher dimensions. You might also write that sometimes as nabla dot nabla, which we just write in a shorthand as nabla to the superscript two. Finally, there's a Hessian matrix. We might write this as, and we'll talk about this through the course, just these vector operations as a dyadic product of nabla. That because nabla two equals nabla dot, or inner product, excuse me, the transpose of nabla. And that's just another nice way uh, say Hessian matrix. Uh, common rules which are often derived in calculus three, which we might recall through the course. Uh, say we have f and g, well nabla of f and g is f nabla g plus g nabla f. Nabla of the inner product of vectors u and v would be written out with these cross products and dots. Nabla dot f v would be once again just bringing f out f of nabla dot v plus v inner product nabla f nabla with the inner product of the cross product of two velocity vectors can be written as the two vectors with their cross products and their difference now the euler equations often have a particular term in them and we'll call this the outer product tensor versus say inner product of vectors. We have an outer product tensor. And this will be basically the multiplications of the particular elements of U and V together. And then if you say, okay, I take the divergence or nabla dot of the outer product of two vectors, you'll get nabla dot U with V plus u dot nabla with v. So you can try and expand out this operation if you want. If you see this particular outer product, you'll have to think of this relation. So it's a very, very compact way of writing um, Euler equations or Navier-Stokes equations in this vector format with um, this notation. More common rules, and many of these should be somewhat familiar to folks. Um, if you have the divergence of a gradient of f, that's nabla dot nabla f. The curl of a gradient is nabla cross nabla f. So, I mean, these are just taking the absolute definitions and applying the operations. Uh, delta f goes as nabla 2f, right? So that's the Laplacian. The gradient of a divergence is nabla of nabla dot V, right? So divergence of a velocity vector and its gradient. The divergence of a curl, of course, is, I mean, divergence is nabla dot. So you see that with the curl of V. The curl of a curl, well, we take the curl of V and then the curl of that result, right? And that makes sense. We curl is a operator that works on vectors. So that one checks out. And then we already talked about uh, the Laplacian definition. Some of these by definition uh, will be zero. So the curl of a gradient of f will be zero. So look for these reductions and the curl, excuse me, the divergence of a curl will be zero. 
Uh, more common rules, especially important for Navier-Stokes equations, there'll be the divergence of a gra gradient of f, that would be nabla dot nabla f, that goes as nabla 2f, which we can just write as the Laplacian. So the divergence of a gradient. There's a few more vector derivatives, and it can be related this way. If we say nabla cross nabla cross v, that can be written as nabla of nabla dot v minus the Laplacian of v. We can also express this as like a tensor product. We might write nabla of nabla inner product of v goes as nabla with the inner product of the outer product of v.